It is indeed a great pleasure to have with us Alison Lewis, who is the chairperson, I think the category is chairman, I will call it chair lady, of the Port Authority. Good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in here. Good morning. Good morning, Rani. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your service that you continue doing. You have a situation at the port where if you thought gray hair was a thing that only belonged to some people, you have just been introduced to it because there is a lot going on at that port that calls for everything in you to be put to the test. I've got a couple of questions here this morning because we are seeking clarity sure. and I believe you are in a position, the best position to answer some of them. The Attorney General, Arawi, said the Port Authority has labored under many difficulties for a long time, the main ones being issues of management. You were brought in with your wealth of experience in key management positions to remedy this situation. What specifically, I ask, uh, uh, by way of clarity, is the mandate of the Port Authority? First of all, I, I just want to make a point here, and that is I'm not an executive chairman. So <laughs> in essence, um, the, the job of the board of directors, board of commissioners of the Port Authority is not one that is operational. Mm -hmm. There is a management, an executive management of the Port Authority. Uh, and <clears throat> essentially, our job as, as, as commissioners basically you know, to ensure that the Port Authority Act, mm. that, it, you know, it is adhered to, and that essentially the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago has responsibility for port, uh, the ports of, of, of Port of Spain, Scarborough, and uh, other so designated ports. I, I, I just want to make a, a point here that um, the port, the, the Attorney General is, is very correct in that, you know, it has suffered the port authority of Trinidad and Tobago has suffered greatly over the last few years and um, and the time has come when the port authority needs to be fixed mm -hmm. and uh, we need to address that as a matter of priority that is one of the priorities from my to my mind for Trinidad and Tobago you know I, I, I listened just now um, you know, to your interview with, with David Abdullah on the economic situation. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to understand also that whatever happens, um, you know, in the economy, it starts at the port. It starts at, you know, what we import, what we export. Yeah. And um, that, is, that is something that I think people need to take on board. And that is why, to my mind, Fixing the Port Authority is an absolute priority. That is why on investigation of, 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 of your service to the country, it is with great relief that I see that you are the person put inside of there. The, the job is going to be indeed a Herculean one, uh, one that even Hercules would refuse. Because following the, the, the independence and before the latest crisis, the route was for 25 years served by, we are talking about the, the, the sea bridge, for 25 years it was served by the Scarlet Ibis and the Bird of Paradise. 1975 was the era of the MV Tobago and the Panorama. Mm -hmm. uh, Quantum Leap into 2000, uh, where we had the fast ferries like the Cat and the Lynx, and then the TT Spirit, I'm, I will not comment, the TNT Spirit and the TNT Express. Uh, the controversy uh, that's going on right now uh, rests in the area of the superfast Galatia. So indeed, as listeners can see, we're looking at a checkered pass. So my question to you is, what are the primary challenges to providing a continuous sea bridge service to Tobago? The critical thing is having... Um you know, vessels operating the route that are reliable, mm -hmm. that are properly maintained, and that are fit for purpose. And uh, I think that um, over the over the last few years, both the TNT Spirit and the TNT Express, they are not new vessels. They're mm -hmm. vessels that are in the region of about 15 and 20, 22 years old. Um, and therefore, you know, one would expect that with vessels that age, Whilst there are a number of vessels throughout the world operating at that age, the, whole, the critical issue here um, is the maintenance of those vessels mm -hmm. and ensuring that they are in tip-top condition to provide a reliable and consistent service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that that is a critical issue here. But $7 million or thereabouts is what was put aside for servicing these vehicles. And uh, from what we understand, and you will correct me, of course, uh, where where I veer, of course, from what I understand is that at the termination 
of the contract of this Canadian firm for the maintenance. We had um, a very dubious um, situation because we were not clear as to what the maintenance records were because they could not be found. Is that correct? Uh, that that is not strictly correct. Please please correct um, me. Yes. You know, the, the, there's been a lot of talk being bandied about with respect to that. And whilst, you know, that was before my tenure, because I would like people to appreciate that we came into being as a board, um, duly constituted, uh, in April. Of that this, is after of the prior year. board resigned. Yes, yes, after the prior board resigned. And mm -hmm. there was, you know, a, a period during which there was no board. And, um, you know, we came in in July. And, uh, you know, the whole question of, um, you know, the... the uh, Bay Ferries, which was the, the company that was maintaining that was mm -hmm. sometime last year. So, you know, that is not something that, you know, that I am really, you know, or was involved in. But I just want to say that, you know, the with the de departure of um, Bay Ferries, I think that at the time, we, the port authority, that is, uh, that we, we did not put something in place that was robust enough mm -hmm. to deal with, you know, what we had before us um, in terms of the maintenance of the vessels to provide the kind of service that people had grown accustomed to. The chairperson of the Port Authority, Alison Lewis, is my guest here this morning, and I'm happy that when we take something in the public domain, put it before you, feel free to correct us, because that's part of what we seek to get here clarity. You are saying that the many reports we have heard, that um, the maintenance records are not to be found or not uh, easily available, is not entirely correct. Is that no, right? that, 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 from my information, that is not entirely correct. It is not entirely correct. Right. All right, fine. I, we are happy to hear that. Tr tr truly, I am. I want to go into the area of, um, of procurement of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Because that really, at the heart of it, I mean, we've had a number of them that were leased. We've had the Superfast Galatia. And the argument there, I, I know because your board is recently there, and I don't think it would serve uh, much uh, yield to go into the contract specifics of it. But part of what is happening here is because the... The unceremonious departure of the Superfast Galatia was because of conditions that the government found were untenable. Let's put it that way. Um, so we did not have a renewal, etc., etc. The procurement of these vehicles is something. Who is in charge of procuring these vehicles? A, a, rather, the question would be, what is the procurement process for sea vessels? Well, <clears throat> essentially... Um I want to make a point, uh, particularly with respect to the sea bridge. Mm. Um, the sea bridge is but a part of the responsibility mm -hmm. of the port authority. Mm -hmm. So I'll deal with you know the whole question of the procurement uh, of vessels for the sea bridge. The port authority of Trinidad and Tobago is the agent of the government mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the government shipping service. I mean, and that is that is embedded in the Port Authority Act. And the, the first um, thing I want to say is that tenders are normally put out by the Port Authority as an agent for the government to procure vessels on the basis of certain criteria mm -hmm. that, um, you know, and specifications that have to be met to provide the, the, the um, you know, the sea bridge, the service on the sea bridge. And at that juncture, the Port Authority puts that out. The um, people respond, and you know it's an open tender that is that is that goes out, and um, on the basis of that, the tenders are evaluated by the management um, team, procurement team, and then the tenders committee of the board, mm -hmm. and then it comes to the board for approval, and um, the board makes it then makes its re recommendations to the the minister of works and transport, who is the line minister you know, for the Port Authority. And then, you know, the minister takes it, be it a cabinet or as the case might be. So, you know, and that, that basically is the process. The Port is, is going to do the research, seek out the vehicle, do the analysis, then take make a, uh, recommendation. a recommendation. It goes to the line minister, yes. and there he signs off on this once it meets all that he knows it to be. Did this happen in the case of the Galatia, for the best of your understanding? I, I t to be quite frank, I really can't answer that question. I, you mm -hmm. know. I really, I really don't know what the process 
you know, that was employed with respect to that. That was All way right. before my attention. Good enough. Let me stay with the time that's right now because up till Wednesday, folks had a hard time trying mm. to get to Tobago. So let us stay with where we are here and stay with something you mentioned a moment ago. I'm going to put the emphasis in it in case you just join us. My guest is Alison Lewis. She holds a B in Economics and Management for the University of the West Indies and holder of the Public Service Medal of Merit Gold for Outstanding and Meritorious Service to Trinidad and Tobago. We are indeed fortunate to have you. Let's deal with the spirit that seems to have been invoking the wrong spirit of recent times and to call the TNT Express. It's almost like a comic book. <laughs> the Express, really? It's stolen again. Okay, let's talk about this dry docking situation. You said a proper maintenance regimen was not put in place after the last contractor left. Why not? You're asking me about something that's way before my time, Rennie. And it's still I, before I, your time. Okay, that, so let's go into... That was before my time. That, that happened mm -hmm. last year. All right. And essentially, you know, I, I, I really don't want to comment on that. Good enough. So let's go into where we are now. What yes. is being done right now to remedy the situation we are looking at with regards to the sea bridge uh, to Tobago? Okay, at present, let me just give you, you know, generally um, what the status is. Mm -hmm. At present, the TNT spirit... Um, is not on the route, um, and she goes into dry dock on the 7th of, of June. Mm -hmm. uh, the TNT Express, um, which unfortunately should have gone into dry dock before and didn't, um, is now on the route, and uh, we have had quite a number of failures um, on the Express. Um, the last one, you know, being as you know close as, as last Wednesday, when unfortunately, um, there was no sailing of the of the express on mm -hmm. Wednesday night, and a number of people were, were, were terribly disappointed that they could not get across um, to Tobago. Um, so, <clears throat> what we have been doing in order to supplement, um, you know, the the, the the service is using the um, water taxis, mm -hmm. um, you know, to provide you know service to passengers and their luggage because. You know they can't carry things like cars and so so mm -hmm. it can generally carry passengers and luggage and um we have um been fortunate in 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 that you know we were able to use one of the um the nitco the water taxis to ply the route to tobago which we did on on thursday morning after mm -hmm. the failure on wednesday night um and if essentially we were able to get um, you know the express to a position where you know she could make the the, the run, albeit very slowly, mm -hmm. uh, taking you know um, the 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 failure into into consideration. And um, of course, I, I want to make it clear that you know we would not sail the vessel, um, and no captain or engineer would would allow that vessel to leave the port unless they felt fairly comfortable, very comfortable, that it was safe to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, whilst, you know, it may have taken a little longer, taken into consideration the failure that, that had occurred, uh, we did get uh, the express across, and um, we also had the water taxi coming back um, from Scarborough uh, the, f the following day, and the express did leave um, the, the evening. So as the situation stands right now, the, we are operating with uh, just the express mm. and, you know, with service uh, from the, the water taxis. And I really want to thank, thank NITCO, um, you know, for its support, um, you know, the, the, you, with the water taxi service. You know, and, and I, I would go back on, on this one thing. It, in, in, you know, when the water taxis... When we considered, you know, the water taxi service, mm -hmm. you know, there was always the intention and in and having this in mind that in an emergency situation on the sea bridge, that the water taxi would be able to pick up some of the slack. This was um, always an understanding. It was an understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 NITCO itself um, did have, you know, some problems with the water taxis themselves. There were four, and I think one or two of them were down, but. But as it stands now, I think they're back up to three, so we are able to um, they are able to facilitate us 
um, from time to time. That's our interim uh, measure. But that is purely an interim, Mm -hmm. an interim measure. I want to go into, just step back just for a moment, because if we are going to get the spirit uh, in dry dock, you say it's from the 7th of June. When are we expecting it back? They, we expect it back. Uh, the expectation is that it will be back um, the beginning of July. So it will be out of service just about a month. And one can, uh, I mean, you can only be optimistic because you don't know until it gets in there. But yes. one can only hope that this time a proper inspection would have been, it would have been done. I mean, dry dock means it's out of service so we can work on this thing totally. We can expect yes. some consistency in service so we, um, you know, once it's returned. Well, yes. Mm. Uh, I want to say this, that, you know, putting the spirit into dry dock, um, there's going to be a total overhaul, not just a routine dry dock um, situation. Mm. It is going to go into dry dock and should be completely, um, you know, looked at and overhauled, etc. Mm-hmm. That is the intention. Um, so that when the spirit comes back in service, uh, we expect that it would be operating in top-notch condition. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, given its age and so. All right. And, 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 and as far as the Express is concerned? As far as the Express is concerned, we are going to take the Express into dry dock definitely mm-hmm. in September. With the same overhaul? Um, with, yes, with the same, um, in, same intention mm-hmm. to completely look at the dry dock. The, the scope of works is very, very wide because it will go not just mechanical, but also electrical. You mm. know, every aspect of that, bo- uh, you know, of those two boats. There are many people know. in Tobago who are listening yeah. to us talk right now, Miss Lois, and going like, yes, the grass growing, but the cow is starving. I speak so not just of passengers, but those who must get food coming to Tobago, yes. those who must get goods and services, uh, you know, go, go, go through uh, getting products to Tobago and from Tobago to here and they're saying well let's talk about this whole issue of the barge as an alternative if the barge is not working tell me what am I going to do in the meantime you talk about all these wonderful things being planned for the spirit and the express but what happens to us now okay there are two aspects of this Renny and and, and I, and I want to make this this point huh? please we are talking about the, the spirit and, and and the express and that's basically um, to deal with the, the passenger, passenger side, side of it. Of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the cargo side of it, you know, is, is something, you know, separate and apart. Mm-hmm. Even though on the Spirit and, and the Express, you know, you would take light a little something, vans yes. and, you know, that kind of thing, like a bread van or, or you know, some such thing. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the, the cargo situation, I mean, you're talking about something that is totally different. Mm-hmm. Big stuff, yes. Mm-hmm. And that is, that is big stuff. I have to say that, you know, um, unfortunately, when, uh, when, you know, we came in as a board, we were faced with a situation in which Galicia was due to, to leave in about 10 days' time. And therefore, it was necessary for us to try and put, you know, um, things in place to ensure that there is some service to Tobago. It mm-hmm. may not be up to, up to Galicia fashion. It may not have been. But at least we had to put something in place. And the point is that, you know, there are not vessels sitting down up there on a shelf, out there on a shelf waiting for us to say, hey, I would like that one and that one and that one. Mm-hmm. You know, this, 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 this requires, you know, a, an in-depth search. And even if you find a vessel, you don't just buy a vessel. I mean, none of us goes and buys a house without inspection, without, you know, looking at your budget, looking at, you know, the things that are required, the age and, you know, and, and, and you have to do your due diligence, essentially, before you commit your funding, you know, funding to, to this. Mm-hmm. Ten days was, was basically, you know, a very short time for us to do so. And therefore, we embarked on, on, on a search that, you know, was monumental. Um, the, the, the pickings were not, you know, very too many. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole question mm-hmm. of the use of the barge you know, we insisted and we still insist that it, this is not ideal. We did not put it out there that this is what, you know, the ideal situation for Tobago mm-hmm. and for, for what was required. But, you know, in looking at it, the, the question was, do we say to Tobago, well, you have to wait two months before I can bring goods to Tobago, mm-hmm. you know, or do I look and find what is the 
the best possible in the circumstances and in the situation um, to try and at least, you know, get, you know, some service to Tobago during, the, during that period. And we always insisted that, you know, with respect to the barge, um, mm. that it would take, you know, things like heavy machinery, construction material, and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, that would be a little more hardy. Mm -hmm. um, and we did get another vessel in the interim to basically um, take, you know, some of the regular cargo across across the Tobago. It's been in service for the last month, and um, during that month, it, as I say, it is not ideal because there were some issues with respect to the to the vessel and its ability to take passengers. It was purely a cargo vessel, and therefore there was there was not room for, for passengers, like mm -hmm. truckers and so, who would normally go across. A company the vehicle, but now they have vehicle. to make other arrangements to get there so too. So what we mm -hmm. did is we said, okay, we would give you, um, if you, you, your, your van or your truck is on the, on the, on the barge. provider, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, you, we would take you across you know, on the regular sailings, you know, um, with the Spirit and the Express. At the time, we had the Spirit and the Express, you know, operating. Mm. And um, as you know... And no charge. Things, you would take them over yes, with no charge as accommodation. Correct. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. what happened is that with the breakdown of the Spirit and, you know, the, the, the breakdowns that, that were occurring, the late sailings, uh, because we had to, to deviate from the schedules, that we had mm -hmm. and um, therefore you know we encountered some late sailings and you know sailings you know pretty um inconsistent so therefore there was a mismatch you know and you know that caused you know some disruption you know with respect to to that and you now know you have to find a different set of arrangements now yes and now i mean we have not stopped we have not stopped looking mm -hmm. for um you know a situation that that would be more ideal in this 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 period because the intention always was to have a longer term mm. solution to this problem mm -hmm. um but the thing about it is we have to we have to bridge the gap the sea the the the, the salt water effect on cargo going to tobago i know that's one of the things raised by tobagonians that that is an issue uh, has that been addressed to a to a satisfactory point at all it's not. It's not been addressed in an ideal. Not fashion. ideal, but that's why I asked satisfactorily. It is, it is, I think yes. It, it you know because we we have taken steps, mm. you know, to treat with that you know covering you know some of the the, the stuff etc. You did not have the the, the 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 widest ocean or biggest forest or, or, or acreage to choose from, as you said. You had to take some things in the interim. I, it, it was reported that there was a vehicle um, that was um, narrowed down by the port to replace the superfast glacier again mm -hmm. again i say it was reported because mm -hmm. oftentimes you find what is reported is not what is is there a vehicle a, in addition to what i'll ask you about in a moment which is the one we're looking to actually buy one own one um that is again reported let's just deal with the first one are you close have you narrowed down a a three to three even though you don't give me the names vehicles that you said these may be ideal yes yes we have um and we have made, the, as the Port Authority, we made certain recommendations um, to the minister, as mm -hmm. I said. And um, I, I have to say that, you know, we, we in, in, in narrowing down, it is just a question. After, after narrowing down, we have to now go and inspect. Mm -hmm. And we have to mm -hmm. do our due diligence um, with respect mm -hmm. to, to, to these vessels. Yes. Um, you know, we don't want to find ourselves in a situation, you know, things look, look nice on brochures. They look nice on, on, on little videos. But the thing about it is, as they always say, the proof of the pudding is in eating. You have to go there and inspect. Mm -hmm. And we have basically engaged, um, you know, an international firm, um, a, you know, registry to basically do that inspection for us. It's a, it, you know, they're reputable. Your time process is usually and about what? 
uh, to get all of this done for you to identify say this looks good now that you have identified how long approximately uh, 80 years they call it estimated time uh, will it take for the this uh, independent agency to look into what you have chosen you do an analysis and, and give, give you back a report okay um that depends on the where the vessel is its availability you know mm. the, and the owner making the 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 vessel available for inspection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and that can vary from the inspection itself doesn't take you know an inordinate amount of time um it would take you about 24 to 48 hours mm. you know to do a full inspection and you know another 24 hours to get the report they, they they're very efficient mm -hmm. in, in that way but the, the the question is where this where is this vessel and um you know whether the vessel is the, the is available for mm -hmm. inspection mm -hmm. and you know th those are the things that that you know will take the time and it could vary the time factor with respect to the chairperson of the port authority uh allison uh, lewis is with me and we're talking about some one aspect of the responsibility of the port board one aspect and i chose that aspect this morning because there are many that can take a very long time and and i just thought we would focus this morning on the sea bridge that's why i'm keeping the attention there it was reported equally that um, the minister or the cabinet rather uh, approved uh, for the purchase of a vehicle clarify that for us please well I mean when when we got into the um, into the, mm. the the port authority the cabinet had we were advised that the cabinet had taken a decision in terms of the long-term to sol solution the, the purchase mm -hmm. of, uh, of a vessel and I would imagine that that would be custom built, you know, um, in the final analysis to to meet the requirements of the sea bridge. Um, that has been a, a cabinet decision. The estimated time of that, there is no way you can tell, but it, it no, is not uh, something that you're going to get tomorrow. It's not something that you're going to get tomorrow, mm -hmm. and that is why mm -hmm. we have to we have to bridge that that gap. So we are looking at dealing with the situation as it is right now, and and ensuring that there is a service, and then we go to you know a more longer term. Um, position, mm -hmm. you know, whilst you you know the the mm -hmm. the the the, the, the uh, vessel which the government has decided to buy is being you know is being built. Mm -hmm. So you so you're looking you're looking there at a period of about two to three years. Understood. And that is, the and that is that what I, that is what I wanted because the minute you yeah. mentioned that everybody's expecting that tomorrow uh, oh, is no. not fast oh, enough. No. It takes a long time. I do want to raise you to an aspect that is not only um, unique uh, uh, to the to the Port Authority, but generally in Trinidad and Tobago, and it is something that I think is bringing what you call unnecessary pressure to any operation. This question of PR. If things are not going well, and we know they are not, the spirit has been taken out of it, the Express is not really doing that, for whatever reason, whatever reason, is it possible we can have some people who are liaising more often and more on, in, in a human, humane sense to people who are understandably incensed? Because it is one thing to say, look, we have been giving decent service all the time, but those people are just pigs. But of course I'm going to be like a pig because I'm angry because you did not deliver what you give to me. So I would expect the supervisor will say, if this person works a six-hour shift, the patients will be worn now after three hours, cut down on the length of their shift, but keep putting people inside of there because the PR aspect of it is just as important as giving me uh, the transport. I mean, what is being done to alleviate that situation? Because it is, it is, it's just untenable to have folks in this level of anger and nobody having a human discussion with them. And they, most times we hear they're not even getting information. They just sit there and wait. That 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 is indeed so. And I have to say, you know, from the Port Authority's you know perspective. Um, you are right, it is an untenable situation and we are seeking to put things in place to ensure that we, we are re basically revamping the, the, the department to provide the kind of, of um, you know, a quality you know, service, communication service, because it's, it's a question of communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, 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 one of the things though, and I think um, this is important, is that it is very difficult to communicate if you don't have something to communicate. And by that I mean mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, you know, the engineers are not in a position mm -hmm. to give you information with respect to when would that vessel sail. 
so that I can communicate to the people that she will not sail at nine, but mm -hmm. she will sail at 12, mm -hmm. you know, with that kind of certainty. And that has been a lot of the problem that we have faced. And I know people get very exasperated. Um, and I'm talking about our people now who have to communicate. Um, they, they too are very frustrated because mm. they are not being given the kind of information that they require to communicate with the people. That, that, that's, so, you know, it comes back again to what I started off saying, and that is in the context of our maintenance capability and our ability to diagnose and deal with some of the situations that we face you know, with those those vessels of a technical nature, that is is is, is a critical part of it. Madam Chair, woman, just to leave our listeners with a clear area as as to what is we have identified the dry docking, we have identified the overhauling to be done, we have identified and accepted that the barge is not uh, the, the the panacea, but it surely is a way of getting things done. Folks in Tobago were worried that their tourism will suffer, worried about a lot of things because of the shortcomings uh, of the situation here. Anything else is being contemplated um, in the short term, i.e., yes. getting another another vessel from Definitely, somewhere. Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. um, as I, I said a little earlier, you know, we continue to look and we continue to to work on this issue and work on this problem. And we have identified, um, you know, some vessels which can be put into service, you know, within a, a reasonable time frame. Mm. Um, we we are now doing our due diligence and we have um, right now inspectors on two of the vessels that we that we are looking at. Um, uh, we have finished an inspection on one and we are continuing our, our negotiations. And um, we have been given the go ahead, um, you know, at the highest levels to basically pursue um, you know, getting getting a vehicle here in this in the shortest possible mm -hmm. time. So I expect, I expect that within um, the month of June, that we would have another vessel in um, in our waters to basically uh, assist when the TNT Spirit, you know, is on dry dock. Repeat that expectation for me. The time frame. I said I expect that within this month of June, mm -hmm. or at least you know, to by the end of June, that we should have all things, our due diligence, panning out, and all things being equal, that that that, that would be so. Because as I said, you know, we have we have been given, you know, the clearance to, to, to pursue, you know, um, to pursue that vigorously all things being equal we yeah. would expect uh, to see a, 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 a more uh, workable um, solution uh, uh, situation rather uh, by the end of june is what we're seeing madam chairperson you have taken uh, of your time to come here this sunday morning of that i am truly it's appreciative anything heather too i have not inquired of you that you think would be germane to our listeners this morning in the sense of clarity with the situation that's going on specifically for the sea bridge I just, I just want to say that, you know, the Port Authority is working diligently to, you know, relieve the present situation, you know, on the sea bridge. We are going to continue to work to ensure that, you know, the service is once again, you know, reliable, consistent, and something that we, we would be proud of and all of Trinidad and Tobago can be proud of. Um, that is my, my promise mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and I know that I have the support you know, to do so, and the commissioners, my fellow commissioners and I, you know, will continue to work diligently to get that service back up together with all the other things that we have to do on the port. I am appreciative, one, of you coming in here this morning, but even more appreciative of the years you have given in serving Trinidad and Tobago. Right. I'm going to hold you to that. Yes, I will. <laughs> and I'm also going to ask you not to be a stranger. Uh, we right. may be knocking on your door again for updates as sure. we go through looking at this situation. Sure, it would be my pleasure.